I'm really excited about today's video because we're gonna talk about the products that don't really get any airtime. These are like the unsung heroes of my beauty routine. Most of these are like makeup slash skincare adjacent, but they're not necessarily like a blush, a bronzer, a highlight, but they're products that I can't really do my routine without that we need to talk about. And I'm really excited to say that this portion of today's video is sponsored by Peace Out Skincare so we can talk about their acne day dots. So I had a little pimple going on right here for like the past week. If you've seen me at all anytime in this past week, you would have seen me with a pimple patch on. And I've talked before about how I'll usually just do my makeup right over my pimple patches, but sometimes when I'm out in public, I do feel a little bit self-conscious, like how noticeable is this? Are people looking at it? And that's why Peace Out created these. This is a thinner version of a pimple patch, so it's much more discreet. So I'm gonna insert a video of me applying my makeup over top of the patches. And I actually, the night that I filmed this, later that night I went to dinner with Khaki and Simbri. Those are some creators you might know. And I asked them when we were at dinner, can you tell that I'm wearing an acne dot right now? And they both leaned in and they're like, I did not even notice until you said something. So if you're a little self-conscious about pimple patches and wearing them in public, this is something a lot less noticeable just because it is more thin. The finish of it isn't quite as shiny. So it's a little bit less detectable. These are new, they're available at Ulta Beauty. And thank you so much to Peace Out for partnering with me on this first little beauty secret here. But let's talk about some other favorites in my beauty routine. Okay, these two I feel like I've been meaning to talk about for a while. I've made a few like short form videos about this thing right here, but let's, let's do these kind of together because these are my lash secrets. Like these are game changers. So first things first is a lash separator. I, I really didn't think I needed a lash separator for the longest time. Like I would hear people talk about them and I was like, well, I have a spoolie. Like I can just comb through my lashes with a spoolie if they start to get clumpy. And you definitely can, but I didn't anticipate that a lash separator would be so much more effective than a spoolie. And I'm telling you it is. When I use a spoolie, they're just so flimsy. They're great for brushing through eyebrows, but for eyelashes, especially depending on like the formulation of the mascara and how clumped up your lashes are, sometimes they can't really get in between the lashes that well. A lash separator, gets in there very well. This one, this is the one I use every day, so it's a little bit dirty. I've got some mascara gunked up on there. I, I clean it off pretty frequently, but you know, this is just real life. But the one that I have is from Grande Lash. I don't think it needs to be this one. Like you could buy a different one. I'll have everything linked down below as always, but this will make such a big difference. The Milani mascara that I've been talking about lately that I really don't like, their tubing mascara, the only way I can use that is if I take this and comb through my lashes because it separates them. Even my Lottie London mascara, the super fake, that one, the formula is tricky because it can be very clumpy, but once I go in with this, it turns from like such a clumpy mess to one of the most amazing volumizing mascaras I've ever tried. So try a lash separator. I'm telling you it's worth the hype. But the next one, this is a heated eyelash curler. Weird, I know. And let me, let me explain how it works because when I first heard about it, I was like, what the heck? How do I even use that? So this one is also from Grande Lash. But again, other brands make these. That's just who I happen to have mine from. So looks like this. And you have this button here to turn it on. Is mine dead? Don't be dead. Not when we're filming this video. Nope, it's on. Okay. So the first time you turn it on, it turns yellow. And this is for a medium setting. And then you can push it one more time onto green and that's a higher setting. Then you wait for it to heat up, and then once it's heated up, I mean, think of it like a curling iron. You just get in there and then curl your lashes. I'll put a video on the screen of uh, me doing this. Now, I don't use this every single day, and I, I've had people ask about using heat on your eyelashes and how that would kind of compare to your hair. I'm not necessarily sure, though I will say this doesn't get like that hot. It doesn't get hot enough to the point where I'm concerned about burning my eyelids, okay? I'm, I'm not... It's not like a curling iron or anything. It just heats up a bit so that you can lift them. And the nice part about this is you can touch up throughout the day. So a regular eyelash curler, like a manual one, you can't really use on top of mascara. You I mean you can, but you're probably gonna pull your eyelashes out. Whereas this is so easy to use on top of mascara and that's actually how I mostly use it. I don't really use this on just my bare eyelashes. I'll put my mascara on first and then use this to lift them up. And then if it's like midway throughout the day, I'm not even kidding, you can pull this out of your purse, heat it up, just run into the bathroom or like get a handheld mirror and you can pick your lashes back up like this. 
and it lifts him back up. Not necessarily like something you need to have, but a really cool product that I feel like is kind of a game changer in your routine, especially if having curled lifted lashes is really important to you. Okay, let's talk about the heat protectant that I use on my hair. Not like the most glamorous topic to be reviewing, but this is the one that I found that makes the biggest difference because not only is it an effective heat protectant, but it also gives me some more longevity to the hold from my hairstyle. So this is from Paul Mitchell. It is the Flexible Style Hot Off the Press Thermal Protection Spray. So it's kind of like a hairspray and a heat protectant in one. You guys, I have very fine hair. Like I have a lot of hair, but the individual strands are just so tiny and fine. And my hair type is pretty straight. So trying to hold any sort of curl it's difficult. It's very difficult. And it really comes down to using the right products. And this is something that has made such a big difference for me. Like when I use this as my heat protectant, my curls last so much longer. And I've even had like my friends in my personal life try this when they'll come over and get ready. And I'm like, okay, put this in your hair. And they say the same thing. The only thing I will mention is that you have to use just a little bit, like a little bit goes a long way. The first time I used this, I drenched my hair in it. And well, I will say the curls did not move, like they were not budging, but my hair got a little tangly. So the texture of this, if you use too much of it, your hair is gonna kind of knot up a little bit by like day two or three. So just know that. But if you use less, less is more, and you'll still get that extended style, you'll get the heat protection. I'm telling you, this makes all the difference. My go-to hairspray though, which I wasn't, planning to mention that is one of like my game changer products, but I will say the best hairspray I've ever used. If you need a hairspray, I can link this one down below also. It's the Kenra Volume Spray. They have multiple versions. They have more of like a medium hold one. No, you need the one that says it has 72 hour hold. Yeah, they're not kidding. I recently got on board with the little powder puff trend. I mean, I guess not that recently. I would say it was last summer. So first I purchased a pack of these from the Ulta Beauty collection that's their in-house brand i bought a pack of four for like i think like three dollars and this one is obviously very dirty right now but i really really loved these and then i finally gave in just i wanted to see what the hype was about i ordered these i feel like there's little fuzzies flying all around i ordered the little triangle ones on amazon that i see in like every single video just to see what the hype was about Honestly, they're both very similar products. This one is just more of a velvet texture, whereas this one is like not quite as soft. And this one has um, somewhere to hold your finger, so you can apply it a bit easier. But let me tell you, whether it's this or this, a powder puff has changed my powder routine. You guys, especially if you have oily skin, like I really think this type of applicator will be your best friend. So what I do, you know, we'll, we'll touch up a little bit right now. I have my Kosas powder. I just pick up and then just push it into the skin. And a puff like this gives you a much more perfected, smooth, blurred finish. I will say it looks less natural. It looks a little bit more makeup-y. In my opinion, it gives more of like a full glam look like because it, it tends to pick up a bit more powder and you're pushing a lot of product into your skin. So if you would prefer something a little bit less noticeable, you might actually like a brush more, but this wears so much better in my opinion, like because of the way it applies powder and it applies a little bit more product than a brush especially during the summer when I was sweaty and shiny. This was such a must for me. Like it extends your makeup so much more. Okay, we also need to talk about my eyeshadow primer. Not necessarily like the most glamorous category of products. I feel like we don't talk about eyeshadow primers that much, but I used to be a little bit indifferent about this step in my routine. A lot of times I would just bring my concealer up to my eyelids and prime like that. And people would always tell me like, you know, the older you get, you really need an eyeshadow primer. And I'm getting to the point where if I don't use an eyeshadow primer, like I can tell like things, my eyeshadow doesn't want to stay in place anymore. So this is now an important step in my routine when it wasn't necessarily before. And the best eyeshadow primer, like my favorite one, you guys recommended to me, it's from the drugstore. It's this one from Ulta Beauty. This is their matte eye primer. I use, well, first of all, I've used a lot of this, you can tell, but I just take the tiniest little bit, just one little dot, 
and then just spread that out over my eyes. You really don't need a lot of this. If you use too much, it can almost make it a little bit harder because it grips onto the foundation, or not the foundation, but the eyeshadow pretty well. And then blending out can be tricky if you have too much product there, but just a little bit of this and my eyeshadow will not go anywhere. Another drugstore one that I haven't used in a bit, but I used to really love was the Lid Lock Primer from CoverGirl. So that's another nice option. I mean, I also love Urban Decay Primer Potion, but if you didn't want to spend a high-end price on an eyeshadow primer, you definitely don't have to. There are a lot of drugstore ones. But let's talk about nails for a minute. So I have been using press-on nails for a little bit over a year now. And let me tell you, I'm hooked, you guys. So I've, I've used press-on nails in the past, like years ago, and they were not this nice years and years ago. Like I, I specifically remember when I was in college, I would use them and they never fit my nails quite right. Like it was very obvious they were press-on nails. They would fall after like one day, they would be popping off of my nails. So that experience really turned me off from them. And it wasn't until somewhat recently that I learned there's so many good press on nails out there and you don't have to spend very much money at all to have your nails looking like you went to the salon. So I still do paint my nails from time to time, but these just last so much longer because if I'm painting my nails with nail polish, within a few days I've already got a chip and I'm really particular. So once they start to chip, I either need to redo them or at least try to touch up that mark. Whereas press on nails last minimum one week for me without any problems, but usually I've got these on for more like two and I'm not gonna lie, there have been a few sets that I've had on for past two weeks, no problems. Occasionally I'll start to lose like one nail, but I'll just glue it back on, no problems. Let me walk you through. I mostly use Glamnetic nails and I've purchased all these myself. They haven't sent any of these to me, but um, this is just another set from them that I want to put on soon. This was limited edition. They don't have this anymore, but it's Hello Kitty. How cute is it? The nails I'm wearing right now, this set is also from Glamnetic. These are called the Haley. I just purchased these ones from Static Nails. I've not, this is my first time trying this brand, but I've heard really good things. I bought an all red set. And then this set I think is so cute. They are um, just French tips, but the tip is holographic. So I think that's gonna be really pretty. Also, Lottie London just sent these to me. I didn't even know they made press on now, so I'm really pumped to try these next. This set, actually I'll, I'll do close-ups. I feel like you can't see that well in this lighting, but this set, these are pastel swirls. I think this is adorable. Now, you might be thinking, well, Kelly, that kind of also gets expensive like going to the nail salon. And I, I will say it can, but I use these nails at least three times. So every set, like once I take it off, I put them in a little, um, um, sometimes they come with a little mini Ziploc baggie. So if they do, I put them in there and I save them in a container and you know, you clean them off and then you can put them back on later on. So now you're probably thinking your next question, well, wait, what about the glue? I just file it down. So you can either file it down by hand or I have a nail drill that I bought at Ulta. I think it was like 20 bucks. And I use it a lot of times when I'm doing my nails anyways, especially if you do like gel or anything yourself at home, this is handy. But I just take the nail drill, saw off the excess glue and then put the nails back on and I reuse them multiple times. And let me know if I should talk more in depth about my experience with press on nails, my recommendations, my tips, because I feel like I have a lot of them and I've shared some tips on Instagram before, just like on stories and whatnot, but maybe in my next vlog or something, I could do a little segment just about press on nails. Let me know. But the key is the glue. And for me, the best glue that I've found is the brush on glue from Glamnetic. It applies like a clear nail polish, but I'm telling you, if you use that glue, that's how you get them to last for at least like one to two weeks. But yeah, I'm hooked. You see me wearing my press-ons a lot. Like I said, I reuse the same nails over and over again. I, I try to do around like three times per set, but it depends. If they're still holding up, I'll keep applying them. I'll keep applying them until they start to look bad. Ooh, but one question I always get when I talk about press-ons is kind of related to like a game-changing hair product. Well, beauty product. It's how do I wash my hair? Because people will always say, you know, I get the, the hair stuck under the nails. 
Now that doesn't normally happen to me too much because I really push the cuticle back and like set the nail in there. So I don't have that problem too much, but once I've had the nails on for a good like two weeks and they're starting to lift a little bit, I can get some hair stuck in there. So I just use my scalp brush. Even if you don't use press on nails, I really think a scalp brush is just such a game changer because it helps to really exfoliate the scalp a little bit, especially if you use a lot of dry shampoo or just anything at your scalp, you're gonna get buildup. So being able to manually exfoliate a little bit is really helpful. And it's also nice if you can't really get your nails in your scalp without worrying that you're gonna rip your hair out. Those are definitely some of like the biggest game changers and unsung heroes in my beauty routine. Thank you to Peace Out for partnering with me on today's video. And if you have any game changers in your beauty routine that you think I need to know about, leave me a comment down below and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.